Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the 10th day of the 10 tips series. Uh, today being the last day, obviously, we have a very interesting topic to be discussed. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for uh, having come across to listen to these uh, workshops. And I believe that you guys had some takeaways from these series of workshop. We will be doing a lot of workshops like this, and we will keep you posted on this. Um, so let's start off with today's topic. People will keep on joining in between. So today's topic is on experiential learning. How experiential learning works in children and how you can start building up the experiential learning in children, right? So uh, let's start off with, hope you all are able to see the slide. Can somebody give me a thumbs up? Great. So let's start off with what is experiential learning? Now, experiential learning is when learning happens through experience. Now we all cannot learn through books or everything cannot be learned through books. Uh, we go to school, but do we learn to make friends through books? No. Uh, do we learn to cook our dishes, the traditional dishes through books? No. Do we learn to play through books? No. So all these things, or do we learn to eat through books? No. Uh, these things which are basically there into our day-to-day -day life, these things which are there, which makes us kind of going on, the, uh, going on every day, uh, we don't learn these things through books, right? So these things are majorly learned through experiences. And if at all we do not give experiences to the child, the child might lack in understanding and learning a lot of things. And hence, we always tell that, please give experiences to the children. Give them a lot of, uh, lot of activities which they can just experience by themselves and do not interfere in what they are experiencing. What we usually do is we keep children telling that, okay, you do this, you do that. And until and unless the child is not doing whatever we are saying to the child, that till that time, it becomes very difficult for us to resist that, okay, the child is doing this, right? Let me give you a small example. Now, if a child is wearing the left shoes in the right and the right shoes in the left, okay, so alternate, exchanging the uh, shoes and wearing it. So what as mothers or as teachers or as educators we usually do, right? The first thing which we do is that we tell them that, okay, this is wrong. The left shoes is on the left and the right shoes has to go to the right. So you have done Ulta, correct? But ideally, don't you think that we should give the child a little bit of time to experience that which one is a left shoes and which one is a right shoes? Ideally, yes, right? Because all these days when mom was making the child wear that shoes, the child was quite comfortable, right? Because the child, obviously, when the child is very young at one year old or one year old, one and a half years old, till that time, obviously, you would be making the child wear the shoes as mothers or as teachers. Uh, you would be making the child wear that shoes, correct? Now, all of a sudden, when at two years, when the child starts, or two and a half years, let's say two and a half years, the child starts wearing shoe by himself or herself. The moment the child puts the left shoes into the right and the right shoes into the left, the child feels the difference, right? The structure of the shoes tells the child itself that what you have done is not right. I'm not fitting into onto your 
So the left shoe tells that I'm not fitting into your right leg or light feet. And the right shoes doesn't fit into the left, uh, left feet, correct? So child himself or herself experiences the difference between what is right and what is wrong. So let us give them the time to experience what is going to be right and what is wrong rather than we jumping into conclusion and thinking that they will not be able to identify that which is wrong, correct? So when we are telling the child that, okay, left shoes is for left, you have not put it correctly. That means we are doubting the capability of the child that at two years or two and a half years, he's not even realizing the orientation of the legs and the discomfort when the right is in the left and the left is in the right, okay? So when you are challenging that key, the child doesn't know, that means you are absolutely challenging the uh, ability of the child that the child doesn't even understand. So don't doubt the ability of the child that if the child is, uh, that the child will not be able to understand the slightest of things. So giving a little bit of time for them to experience that this is right, and this is wrong will give them a lot of confidence that I am going to do something good and I'm going to learn something. And that is by themselves. They are going to learn things by themselves. Now, the moment the child understands that this is right, this is for my right foot and this is for my left foot, that point of time, the child will never forget. And you don't have to tell them again and again and correct them again and again. The child will, I mean, always start putting the right shoes into the right and left shoes into the left. Okay. So please give them that independence of learning by themselves. Correct. Now, this is a small model of how experiential learning happens. In experiential learning, student or the child is the center the child is the observer, the child is the learner, the child is the teacher as well, okay? So the child is learning by themselves. The child is understanding by themselves. The child is applying things by himself and the child is also a participant, okay? So the participant is also the child, the learner is also the child, the teacher is also the child. So experiential learning makes the child completely at the center. So as I said, when I play or when, when the child plays, nobody tells the child that this is what is the right way to play. But if you see the new age mums uh, or the new age teachers, we have been telling the children that this is a right way to play. Believe me, there's no right or wrong way to play. It's, it's what the child is experiencing. It's what the child experimenting. Now, all of us would have seen that when the children are there into the park uh, and they are going on the slide, they don't want to get on through the stairs and slide down. Everybody wants to go from the slide up and then go down from the stairs, isn't it? That's what usually children do. But do you think that it is wrong? Majority of us tell them that, okay, you should go by the stairs and you should come down by the slide. Don't you think that the child knows that? The child would have actually known this from a long time. My voice is breaking. Okay. Give me some Just a second. Let me just check that if I can just put it across onto a different internet mode. Just hold on for a second.
Uh, is it better by any chance? Can somebody give me a... Okay, cool. Let me just share the slide now. Okay, cool. So, uh, so we were talking about the example of slide. Now, when a child is actually not, uh, so when a child is going in the playground, the child usually wants to go up on the slide through the ulta direction and not from the stairs and slide down, right? And we as mothers or we as educators or we as teachers always teach the child that, okay, this is not the right way. The right way is to go by stairs and come down. Don't you think that the child knows that which is the right way? Isn't it? The child has already done that couple of times, going by the stairs and coming down through the slide. So this already the child has done. So don't you think the child knows? Of course, yes. The child knows that this is what is the right way, that you climb the stairs by the slide. I mean, uh, climb the stairs, go up and then slide down. What the child is doing? The child is experimenting. The child is experimenting that what happens if I go through the ulta direction? Is it more fun than this? Or do we, uh, or uh, is it, is it uh, the same thing which I'm doing from this side to that side, right? So the child is not, it's not that the child doesn't understand what is uh, right or what is wrong. The child is experiencing things and the child is experimenting new things. The moment you tell what is a right and a wrong, the exploration stops, the experimentation stops. So as mothers or as teachers, you will have to tell the child, be careful. Okay, what we have to be worried about is the safety of the child, not the experiment of the child, not to tell our decision that what is wrong and what is right for the child. Okay. So let the child experience, experiment, participate, reflect, and apply. We, as teachers, as educators, have to be worried about the safety of the child, not doubt the experience of the child or the knowledge of the child, what the child is doing, right? So let's come to the tips that how we can encourage uh, experiential learning into children. As we always do, we will do the 10 tips. The tip number 10, observation based. Now, majority of the schools, they, they there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, tasks which is given to the children that, you know, you please uh, write something about the tree, uh, the nature, you know, the, these are all projects which are given across uh, to, to the kids. But have we ever told the child that, please go around your neighborhood, see how many trees are there. Can you please take your father along or your mother along and see how many banyan trees are there? How many people trees are there? How many neem trees are there, right? How many pomegranate trees are there? So, so usually nowadays you don't find pomegranate trees uh, in, in the home, but uh, you know, uh, usually in the, little little before i mean i'm talking about 10 12 years back or 15 years back every house every house in a village had a pomegranate tree at the front of the house and a neem tree at the back of the house and that that was a tradition like you know all your health issues and stuffs like that used to be get curated through the neem and uh, the health was was given by the pomegranate that that's how the whole concept was when we used to plant the pomegranate tree in the front and the neem uh, tree at the back right however uh, we we do not find nowadays those trees but please let the child go around in the neighborhood and see how many people trees are there how many banyan trees are there how many neem trees are there and what are the different variations of the trees which you can get rather than just giving them a cutting and uh, pasting activity where the child can go and cut uh, cut a tree, paste it, and just write two lines about the tree. 
right here what is happening is the child knows the trees by name the child knows the trees by the leaves the child can smell the leaves the child can see how tall they are right so so experiencing things can doesn't need much experiencing things can just be on the go when you are going out and taking the child for a walk please talk to them and tell that this is a neem tree this is a banyan tree and the project inside the school or or the teachers who are giving the projects should give them a practical oriented projects where the child has to go and observe that how many banyan trees are there next to it if they can get some leaves and paste it on to their uh, uh, books that's going to be awesome observation and an experimentation so have your projects as teachers have your projects which is going to be observation based and the child is going to experience the nature when you are giving some projects like this please try and getting it, get it observation based where the child has to observe things right and as parents obviously you will have to take it forward that you go ahead and showcase these things to the uh, uh, you know your uh, children so that they understand because there are hardly any banyan and people tree left over in any locality at least i have only one banyan tree which is there in my locality let's come to tip number 9 interaction based children need a lot of interaction uh we as nuclear family have very limited people into our homes and uh, hence it becomes very important that they start interacting if you are staying along with uh, in a joint family where you have a uh, grandparents of the children then obviously these tasks can be given to the grandparents and the children can start interacting with the grandparents if not if it is a singular or a or a nuclear based family then please start introducing your children to a lot of good habits a lot of uh, habits which were good habits of food habits which uh, were there into your fathers forefathers let's say for example um, my mom never used to use a grinder before we had those silbatis which we call those those rock ka things we had those things before for masalas right and and the smell and the aroma of masalas were amazing right so she never used a, a, a grinder for that um similarly the the idli idli atta and everything used to come through that silbati or those specific things which we had at homes for making them right uh i i still remember the the kind of uh, vadis she used to make and she used to store it in big uh, dabbas right nowadays pickles are usually bought from the supermarkets but how pickles were made at home how my grandmother used to make it how the uh, berries pickle were made how the mango pickles were made right so these food habits should be shared across with your children if there was some uh, very uh, traditional dish which which is prepared that has to be shared with the children if uh, there are specific days in which specific food item is prepared please talk to the children about it why it is made in this day right uh, one of the most important thing is your family tree please introduce at least to their cousins their the first cousins and the second line of cousins as well these family trees helps in making the child understand that how many people are there in my family right some of them might not be alive you can also write their date of birth and when they passed away depending obviously on the age of the child when the child understands the concept of uh, death and life uh, you can definitely talk about all those things to child right start with your parents and then their fathers then their fathers it all depends on again the age of the child to how many generations you can go they have to be introduced to their first and the second row of cousins because they need to understand who all are there on to their parallel lines okay build up a family tree that family tree can be put up across onto the walls beautiful uh, you know family portrait cut uh, those uh, ready made um, 
stickers comes nowadays in Amazon. You can buy those and you can start putting it across onto the wall. It looks beautiful and these are an amazing activity for the child to understand family tree as well. Okay. Let's come to tip number eight. Okay. Research-based things. Children should not be only given the information, but they should do research about the things which they are learning. Now, do we all know that why rabbit has pointed ears? Can anyone put it onto the chat box? Why rabbit has pointed ears? I want to understand if anyone knows that why rabbit has pointed ears. Can anyone put it across in the chat box? Or anyone can raise the hand and, and, and speak about. I'm, I'm okay with it. You can please unmute yourself. If anyone knows, then please put it uh, and, and unmute yourself and you can say, why does a rabbit has pointed ears? No? So you all should go for a research-based model of learning. So all the animals, so anyone knows why, why, uh, why do we have ears? What is the function of ears? Anyone can put it across on the chat box or, or you can speak. Anyone, uh, you can mute yourself, unmute yourself and uh, talk. Why do we have ears? What is the function of ears? You all can hear me? Anyone can give me a thumbs up? You all can hear me? Yeah, okay, cool. So are ears for hearing? Yes? Are the ears for hearing? Do we have ears for hearing? By any chance, if anyone wants to answer, are ears to hear? Okay, Kalevani is, she says that it's to hear. Anyone else? No one else? The basic function of the ears these things. So we, we hear through our inner ears, right? So why this portion is there? Why is this portion there? We don't hear from here, right? The, whatever the functions of, of hearing, it's from inside. Why this portion is here? Why do we have this portion? Anyone? So the major or the primary function of the ear is balancing our body. It's not hearing. Hearing is there from the inner ears, right? The outer portion of the ear balances our body. If we do not have our ear, our body doesn't get balanced, okay? That's the primary function of the outer ear. Now, any animal who runs fast, any animal who runs fast, has pointed ears. That's because they balance their body while they are running fast. So a rabbit, when runs fast and immediately changes the direction, the ear, the pointed ear, helps the rabbit to actually change the direction suddenly. Right? Similarly, if you look at the deer, runs very fast and the ears are pointed. Right? So you guys have to please start building up research oriented, uh, uh, you know, projects for children. The children, the child has to do research. The child has to ask you all the whys, why this is there, right? So similarly, you can go back and research that why elephant has long and big, huge fan like ears, right? So I gave you a reason that why a deer, a horse, a rabbit has 
pointed ears so you can observe different kind of patterns of ears into animals and see that why they have different kind of ears right so anything which the child is learning new if the child is not asking you as mother should ask but then before that you should know the answer if you both do not know the answer please go and do a research on google right so this is how the learning should happen the child should be encouraged to ask you all the whys understand all the whys understand why a creature is made like this and why the other creature is made like this why some specific food we have in the winters why some specific food we have it in the summers right so please when you are giving it across giving projects to the children as teachers as parents please make research based projects for them right let's come to tip number 7 collaboration model now as parents you can do a lot of research along with your children collaboratively and along with the teachers as well the children can do a lot of uh, collaborative projects now some of the home based collaborative projects which you guys can do is um, understanding the price of uh, the groceries now let's say the grocery has come understanding the price of the grocery understanding uh, um, you know the different products from different companies so that the child can understand okay the same uh, company makes different kind of products for example parle ji right uh, uh, britannia they, they, there are there is britannia makes so many different kinds of products isn't it so have the child understand which is the parent company and how the parent company has so many products uh, understand the expiry dates of the products right understand the information about what uh what every product has for example a shampoo what are the things which are there in the shampoo the shampoo might be uh, having all the chemicals but but let let the child understand that the, the shampoo is made up of chemicals right we always uh, have to give them a comparison when we bring a ayurvedic based shampoo and a chemical based shampoo right so these are all collaborative projects the child understands the about the product about the parent company the parent company can make different kinds of products together uh, they can have a costlier product they can have a cheaper product uh, you can always ask them to analyze that okay if a 200 grams of toothpaste is costing me uh 20 rupees or let's say 100 rupees 200 grams is costing me 100 rupees and a 500 gram is costing me 150 rupees so which one should i buy do i go for a 500 rupees one or do i go for a 200 rupees one the child has to analyze so i'm getting 300 grams more in just 50 rupees so why would i not buy a 500 grams rather than just buy a 200 grams so start making the child understand these things sitting together collaboratively these things make them understand a lot of things they can prepare a lot of projects into this through collaboration with you tip number 6 news based now these are obviously for a little uh, you know um, a little young uh, not younger children a little elder children where uh, they can start reading small news it there can be a uh, child based news which is uh, there are some child based newspapers also do come where there are bulletins about what is happening around uh, into the children world children's world kind of thing what are the new um, events which are coming up uh, what are the new uh, books which i have come up what are the what are the new cartoon series which have come up so there are news based things which is or there are newspapers specifically for the children which are there or there are magazines which are there specifically for children you can ask them to or, or you can get them a weekly uh, edition kind of thing a monthly edition kind of thing where a child can start reading those things and start justifying what they have learned from there they can make uh, uh, they can write essays they can write write ups they can write uh, 
or or they can follow up a news kind of thing and they can give their point of view about the news so it all depends again on what kind of age group you are dealing with the children this this these kind of activities are little for the elder children where the child can start understanding reading and making sense out of it and giving his or her own opinion okay tip number 5 imagination based uh what if if i had okay let's let's have a little fun now let's say i say that what happens if i say that uh, what will happen if i say that your room is made up of chocolates let's hear some uh, answers in the chat box or you guys can also switch i mean uh, unmute yourself and say what happens if i say that your room is made up of completely chocolate can i see some answers can i see some answers in the chat box or or can i hear some answers you'll be very happy ma'am just happy will you not eat the chocolate the entire room no i don't love more chocolates <laughs> one one <laughs> okay so so what so these kind of questions have to be asked to children let's say you get up in the morning and you get you already see that your hands have turned into wings what will you do uh you you have you get up in the morning and you see that uh, you are there in front of a beach what would you do so these imaginative based questions give them a lot of imagination to uh, think until and unless they are thinking they are uh, their brains are not getting utilized so both critical thinking and creative thinking is important to have experiential learning to experiment things so when they are uh, you know experimenting when they are thinking their then imagination is going way beyond now imagine if we did not have imagination if we did not have fantasization do we did we have the series of uh, beautifully and uh, blockbuster series of harry potter coming in no nowhere right harry potter being one of the major major super duper hits and blockbuster movies uh, uh people went crazy about it people went crazy about it kids were crazy about it so so the imagination was on to a different level altogether the wands the the uh, the the changing of the characters the spells the different kind of spells look at the kind of imagination which which was there so so just give those kind of imaginative questions to the children so that they start imagining things they start writing things they start fantasizing things because this helps them to maybe become a future writer maybe become a future poet maybe become something fu a futuristic artist where they can start uh, uh, doing things by experimenting so give them an imagination based uh, learning as well you you have to start giving them these questions as teachers and as parents to make them or start letting them imagine tip number 4 art based now all children love uh, colors some of them are you know unimaginably beautifully uh, they they uh, use the colors right now encouraging them to start using different kinds of colors uh, and express whatever they think through colors and through art is going to be a beautiful way for experiential learning now you can understand that how children are thinking through their art and craft which they are doing and hence please make sure that they start using variety of colors do not give children uh, only one color when they are doing now let's say for example in schools what happens is that when uh, a child is a child has to do a hand printing 
uh, the teacher, what she does is she takes the hand of the child, she dips it in the paint, and she gives the child gives the child to the attender or the didi that go and wash the hands of the child. Once the child comes back, this this whole handprint of the child has converted into a, a fish, a beautiful fish or a beautiful peacock. And the child doesn't even know, understand how my handprint converted into a peacock, right? The child didn't even see that. So, so don't do that. Let, let the child experience colors. Let the child touch the colors by themselves. Let them hold the brush. Let them start dipping their fingers, dipping their hands into the paint and doing it. Let them splash colors. So until and unless they do this, their experimentation on the colors will not stop. Let them see that if two colors mixes, then what is the result? Let them see if three colors mixes, then what is the result, right? So don't stop them. So art is kind of a beautiful way of expression of their emotions and feelings. Uh, you never know at some point of time, a child might be a great painter. So don't stop them. Let them experiment through the colors. Colors are beautiful mode of experimentation and helping the child to learn a lot of things, right? Uh, Design-based, tip number three, right? Now, when you call a design-based, um, please start uh, making the child preparing or um, so kids love playing with blocks. Kids love playing with Legos, right? But what we do usually is we tell them what to build. We tell them uh, what not to build, right? How to build. So, so these are things which should stop. So let them give the Legos or let them give the building blocks and let them start building it, right? Uh, some of the beautiful experimentations which uh, Frederick Frobel, who is uh, called as the father of kindergarten, uh, and he was the one who started the concept of kindergarten. He was the one who uh, um, he was the one who first coined the term kindergarten. So um, he started beautiful experimentation with chickpeas, chana, and toothpicks or or the sticks. Okay, not toothpicks, but those uh, sticks. Now, children can build so many things using two things, these two things, okay? So they had, they had small toothpicks or the small uh, uh, sticks with them and those chanas with them and the, that those chickpicks, which were, uh, uh, you know, soaked overnight in water and these were soft. So they can prick that and prick one more and two more and three more and then one more chickpeas and there were beautiful designs which they made with those two things right so designs can be made anywhere designs can be made through the uh, through the um, playing cards you know we we uh, we did those playing cards kind of so give these options to the child where the child starts creating something by its own these are very easy to make, but a child needs a lot of thinking what, the, what is going on into the child's mind when the child is building something. So these design-based things should be given across to the child. You might tell them an architecture or talk about an architecture and give something to prepare uh, to them or, or just a pencil and a, a plain paper to them so that they can start drawing that. They might be excited about making something which is very close to the architecture which they have seen by, I mean, shown or introduced by you, okay? Let's come to tip number two, application-based. We all show them uh, what is a fire station, what is a police station, what is a post office, but the application-based things are usually missing. How many of you have a pen friend? Do you have a pen friend? No one has, right? With the internet coming in, with the mobiles coming in, the concept of pen friend has completely died out. All of you know what is a pen friend? 
can uh, can everybody give me a thumbs up if you know all of you know what's a pen friend no okay so pen friend is um when you are friends with each other but you have not seen each other you are just writing to each other you have somebody's address and you're just writing to each other and you know each other through writing and talking to each other through letters so that's called as a pen friend right now obviously nowadays the the mails goes through your obviously email boxes uh, the post offices do not have much of relevance but encourage your child to write have a pen friend maybe they can have a pen friend i'm just giving an example but uh, you know um, have them these kind of exciting things which they can uh, do where they can actually understand the utilization of of a of a place why how a post office is utilized um you can also talk to them about diets let them let them start so a dietitian or a doctor who talks about nutrition to the child the child can understand the value of every food i mean obviously it depends on the age of the child uh, the child should understand the value of the food what kind of nutritional content and start making a food plan for themselves for the moms for the dads right so these are all application based things and the child starts seeing that whatever there whatever was there she had prepared or he had prepared in the menu plan the same thing is getting prepared at the kitchen right that becomes quite exciting for the child so these are all application based hence experiential learning fosters through this tip number 1 theme based projects uh if you are let's say for example you are going to an outing and you have uh, seen a river and uh, you see the, the name of the rivers are there i mean you understand that which is the name uh, which is the river where you have gone please ask the child to start reading about it the historical the mythological the geographical uh, all the details about the river maybe the mountain maybe the uh, what you say the the temple which the uh, which which you have visited and then give the child enough of uh, time to start projecting it in terms of uh, uh, you know in in either words or writing however they want to project they can also make cutouts they can also have surfing through internet obviously these are for a little elder children where the children can start doing theme based projects okay with this obviously we end the 10 tips um you guys can also come across and do a lot of courses with us in uh, for experiential learning um we do have a lot of courses on uh certification courses on this which are 10 hour programs and uh, obviously diploma courses on early childhood education and uh, nursery teachers training beautiful accreditation from international organization and then fifth ministry of hrd of india through all india early childhood care education when you complete the course you obviously get three certificates one is your poxo one second is your course completion certificate and third is your safe baby training certificate these are two specific certificates which are given across to you our centers are across uh, bangalore hyderabad chennai and mumbai anything you want to write across to us please do write across or call us up on 9110883082 great if there is any questions if anyone wants to ask i would be more than happy to answer hi ma'am hi uh, no questions for much day uh, we are very happy and uh, thank you so much for this workshop it's really informative for us uh, we enjoyed it a lot ma'am the send this where very awesome thank you so much thank you so much i uh, hope you all have uh, given your email addresses when you had made your payments so we will be sending you a shortly a certificate as well for attending this workshop okay
Uh, and we'll also keep you posted about the next workshops, which is going to come across um, when um, obviously we are uh, going to uh, conduct a couple of more workshops in the month of February. Uh, so we'll keep you all posted on that as well. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for being a lovely audience. See you in our next workshop. Whenever it is happening, we'll keep you posted on that. Okay. Bye-bye all.